In its first year as a publicly listed company, Diversified Gas and Oil, a US-based gas and oil producer focused on the Appalachian Basin, has said that revenue rose a whopping 144% on a more than 300% rise in EBITDA and dividend payable up 173%. Chief Executive is Rusty Hudson. He joins us now with some more analysis of this. So you're now the largest oil and gas producer, I believe, on AIM. How have you done this? Purely a doing exactly what we said we would do at the IPO. We said once we uh, raised that capital that we would focus our attention on acquiring accretive assets, uh, which we've done. We've, we've done about $90 million worth of transactions in 2017 and have expanded that into the first quarter of 18 with another $170 million of acquisitions since then. Yeah. Do you um, therefore see a continuation of the sort of increase in business that you've seen over the last year repeated in, uh, in this period? Without a doubt. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity in our, especially in the Appalachian Basin right now. We're seeing a lot of deals. Um, we don't do them all, obviously, but um, we see a lot of continued activity there at very good multiples. Yeah. How are you paying for all these? A little bit of both debt and equity. Um, obviously, last year we were successful in um, getting a new credit facility, which helped us to close on the larger acquisition we did in June of 84.2 million of Titan assets. Uh, but in the first quarter of this year, on the back end of 189 million um, equity raise that we did in January, we were able to refinance that at a much lower debt um, facility um, in terms of interest rate. Uh, and we have capacity now of, you know, $110 million of leverage sitting there at dry powder to do more deals. Yeah, how are you able to do this in terms of staffing numbers? Because clearly when you're taking on this extra business, it creates extra um, uh, workflow, I should say. Certainly mm -hmm. in your in -tray must be enormous now compared to how it was. Yeah. Uh, how are you uh, approaching the workload? Yeah, so typically when we acquire these assets, almost can, we always keep the, the employees that come along. The, those people are going to be displaced anyway if we didn't keep them. So the operational staff stay in place, which helps us obviously to continue to take care of those wells uh, with the same people that were already there. Uh, and then we've really done a good job in the last year of increasing the capacity within our GNA structure uh, to handle more um, assets and to continue to leverage that up. Mm. What, what has been the, the, the progress you've made in terms of numbers then for, for, for production over the last year? And what are your mile posts for, for this coming year in terms of production levels? Yeah, so we started the, at the IPO, I believe, at around 3,500 barrels of oil equivalency. Um, we've done those a three day. a day. Uh, we've done those three transactions um, throughout 2017, ended the year at about 10,400 barrels of oil equivalency per day. Um, and then with the two transactions that we announced in the first quarter, uh, that puts us up to that 28,000 barrels of oil equivalency, which then obviously makes us the largest producer on AIM. Yeah, I want to take a look at the share price in just a minute, but I think uh, built into this is what I said at the top is the your dividends got up 174%. I mean, clearly this is a way to reward shareholders for, for, for taking on this uh, new risk and so forth that you've got. How do you see the devel uh, dividend developing? Was that a one-off increase or, or are you looking to to continue to No, it's a progressive. Investors. I mean, uh, we have told our investors as we increase cash flows that we would return 40% of free cash flow back to the investors. Obviously, we've done that up to this point. We'll continue to do that going forward. Uh, you know, I think the dividend yield at your, the full year 2017 dividend yield was slightly over 6%. Um, that dividend will grow and probably, you know, stay in that range going mm. for 2018. We've got the share price up here. Um, you can see that uh, I think well, you listed at 65? 65p. 65 pence. Uh, here we are now at, uh, what, almost 87 pence. You've seen a little bit of an uptick in, in the um, uh, share price here. We're not at the highs. Um, how do you view the investment opportunity at these levels? Uh, I think we're undervalued. I mean, if you look at our, the multiple, you know, based on cash flows of the business, um, you know, and look at our U.S. peers, not, not the U.K. peers, because it's hard to find peers in the U.K. with cash flow production companies. Uh, but in the U.S., we're still trading under the multiples of the companies that compare to us in the U.S. Um, so I've, I feel like there's definitely upside uh, in the share price. And I think as we continue to do exactly what we said we would do, which, you know, that's been my... I keep grilling it over and over again with our investors. Listen, I told you this is what I was going to do, and this is exactly what we've done, and we'll continue to do that. I think it'll resonate. Yeah, but you also say in the statement that it's challenging out there, which surprised me um, on the on the oil side at least, because there is this big rise we see in the price of crude. What do you see as, as challenging? Well, I think that you know the thing you have to keep in mind is we're 90% natural gas, yeah, yeah. and so the oil price, although it's it helps, 
um, doesn't affect us as much. So even with oil prices rising, natural gas prices have stayed relatively flat um, and, and really haven't risen much uh, over the last year and a half. So that's always a, a, a challenge. We're hedged. We hedge our production. We got 36 months worth of hedges. Um, about 70% of our gas production hedge, so uh, we're insulated from downturns in the gas price. But uh, overall, it's just, you know, as long as natural gas prices stay in this level, the, you know, the alternative, is, though, is, is that we're seeing very good acquisition opportunities off that low commodity price. Yeah, so this time next year when we talk, what do you see yourself and what are you going to be telling me? I would say that the story will be essentially relatively the same. We're going to see acquisition opportunities that we're going to take a, um, you know, advantage of throughout 2018. Uh, I think you'll see our dividend continue to progress in terms of dollars and yield, um, and we'll continue to do what we said we were going to do. You raised more money? You raised money, of course, early this year, didn't you? We raised $189 million of equity back in January. Um, we're able to close on both of these acquisitions in the first quarter with equity, mm. uh, so we have debt capacity to go out and do further deals. Yeah. Rusty, we'll have to leave it there, but thanks indeed for joining us. The Chief Executive of Diversified Gas and Oil, Rusty Hudson. Subscribe to IG for educational content, company insight, financial analysis and expert commentary.